Israel have been carried into captivity. And uh, they've been there for about 70 years. And there begin to be some generational discussions back and forth. Because the old folks were sitting around talking about how good the old days were. Does this sound familiar yet? And the young ladies were coming, oh, and they were talking about when the priests would show up, the king, and they'd blow the trumpets in the temple and all the rigmarole and ritual. And the young ladies who've grown up in Babylon in a totally different culture are saying, we don't know anything about that. I mean, that's not part of our experience, and we have our own music thing, uh, you know, whatever, our own worship style. And so this generational back and forth the prophet speaks for God. It says to them, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Amen. Now it springs up. Do you not get it? Perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. That idea of I'm doing a new thing. See, I think new is the book of God, not old. Right. I think from Genesis to Revelation, so we're just going to walk our way through the Bible here. It won't take us too long. Uh, 66, uh, I don't know how, the first book of beginnings, of course, it's hard to talk about anything before then, before there was time or whatever. But creation was new. Adam was new. Eve was new. The world was new. The universe was new. 13 million years ago now, if we believe that, uh, in our, our current, current timeline. But God's not, I mean, uh, you know, even when he sets the world up, he, he's still doing new things throughout. Incarnation is new. I mean, you just, who, who would ever think about, you know, the, the bread of life needing milk? That the Lord of life would have to crawl through a dark birth canal to, you know, or... Or just, you know, who, who would have, no one anticipated incarnation. They could look back and see it, but no one saw that coming. Nobody saw it. No, no one saw Pentecost coming, if you're familiar with that at all, after Jesus ascends and the disciples are hanging out wondering what do we do next. I mean, they hadn't seen the script from, you know, the chosen, um, or, uh, or, so they didn't know what was coming. And, um, Kind of reminds me, you know, of that episode of four in Star Wars, which is the first one, right, that came out. And you've got that lightsaber fight that breaks out over uh, the Millennium. Uh, they're trying to get the Millennium Falcon on the Death Star, and Obi Wan Kenobi and, and Darth Vader having a <laughs> over on the side. And, and Obi Wan Kenobi just folds his lightsaber, right, and Darth Vader cuts him down. It's the end of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Have you seen Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> Was that the end of Obi-Wan Kenobi? No. No, of course not. We run into Obi-Wan Kenobi just a few frames later, right? Luke's making that final run at the Death Star. And he hears, you know, Luke, trust the force. It's Obi-Wan. All right, so Pentecost, I mean, they're in the upper room, and they suddenly begin to hear Luke, Matthew, Mark, John. Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, but, uh, and, and it's, you know, actual. So, so this whole Pentecost, all brand new. And then, of course, let's get to the book of Revelation. That way you feel like the book of all the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a comfort. John sees all the way through to the throne room. And what does God say? When the, when the veils pull back, he says, Behold, I'm making everything yeah. as renovated as possible while I have to work on it. Everything new. It's fascinating. Today we're going to be asking you to think through other aspects of, we'll hear about your progress since we were together six weeks ago. You'll be thinking about ways to sharpen your work and accelerate your impact and your progress over the next little bit. Wouldn't it be just like God to show up and do something new? A new idea, a new thought, a new relationship, a new way. 
In fact, some of what you're doing may feel like old hat. Oh, we've done this before. We've raised money before. We've, we've reached out to the you know, community to try to help with this stuff before. We, we've done uh, our programs. But just remember back, even, even in the Old Testament, God would do some repeat things that he would do in a new way. You remember what that first drive around crossing looked like, right? So that's what we all caught it on the tail. <laughs> Coming out of Egypt, the Hebrews are there. Moses lifts his rod over. God tells him to hold the rod out. Moses gets everybody quiet. I don't know how he did that. Uh, and, you know, he says, stand still and see what God's going to do. And Moses hadn't seen the moon. So he didn't know what was about to happen either. I mean, it's an amazing episode. And I'm sure underneath his breath, he's saying, it right about now would be a good time. God, for you to do it. You know, Pharaoh's going to. And so the waters part, remember, and they go across. Forty years later, Joshua's leading the crowd, right? They've been wandering around for a while, looking for direction. They finally get clearance to land. You're going into the promised land. And, uh, and you're going to go on a drive around across it. Well, being in leadership development most of my life, I know exactly what I would do. I would organize drive around across the seminars. You know, I'd tell everybody, here's what's going on. I'd show the Cecil B. DeMille. You know, here's what it's going to look like tomorrow. I'd volunteer to be in front. <laughs> and I would, uh, you know, crest the hill. And I would go, holy cow. Does God not know what time of year it is? It's flood season. There's water everywhere. And that river, it's not, you, you, it, this, this time, God doesn't start drying up the water until the priests are going to put it. And I'm pretty sure they got it up to their necks. Because this time, God dams the river up 17 miles upstream. Those guys are like proved by the time, uh, you know, this water goes down. I mean, they, they're just happy when it finally starts to, now look, why would you do a drive? Hey God, why do you do a dry ground crossing different? Why not just do it the way you're supposed to do dry ground crossing? Well, a couple reasons come to my mind. First of all, I do think God has a great sense of humor. I'm really kind of counting on that. And secondly, I think every generation needs its own dry ground crossing. You know, our kids can't live off of our faith. They can learn from it. But faith is not something that you store up on the battery, you know, or a tank. It requires immediate engagement. And every generation has to find its own way that they experience God. And what All I'm saying is, today, when you think about things you've done before, could it be possible that God might even want you to do it So, that's my thought. I'm not going to hear any objections. Glenn, you want to offer a rebuttal? Well. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you want to hear from Glenn. That's what I want to say. And see, no, uh, no. Is there anything you want to add? No. I'm putting You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking I've, never heard, I've never heard it that way before. You know, what are you doing a seminar on a drag around? I don't know, but I'm working on it. I need a <laughs> All right. Well, gang, uh, I reviewed uh, your what's next template from the thing that you posted the very last moments of our time together six weeks ago. You sure assigned yourself some interesting work to do. We want to find out how that's going. Angela has reproduced for each of you your template. They have it on in their your packet or on your table. And so what we do is um, we, we're going to ask you to update on, on how that's going. And you're going to have a, a, a template that looks something like this. It's going to have what, what's working. This is where you get to crow about all that good planning that you did last time. You knew it would work. You knew it was just a matter of walking into it. But then we want to know what's stuck. And by that I mean what ain't working. What ain't
What does he think would would it's kind of, And then we want to know your biggest challenge and your greatest opportunity. And uh, and like I say, there'll be a template for you to, to fill out. Now, what we ask you to do here, as you get ready for your report, you'll have about uh, 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes to do this. What we want to do is ask you to draw. You can use three words per quadrant, but the red, please tell us in picture language uh, how it's going. And I know that that just appeals to another part of your brain or to whoever at your table has to crack it. All right, you got it? So you head to the table, we'll come around. In about 20 minutes, we'll, we'll come see how it's going for you. Thank you. 